Good morning, traders. TG Watkins here. I wanted to take a moment and actually give you guys a bit of a market update. You know, basically, hey, what are the internals saying? And so I thought the best way to do this was to take a little clip from our options room session that I go into. Um, I also dual broadcast into the Moxie room. So you guys are seeing what the inside of the trading rooms get, the subscribers. And I thought this would be a pretty good thing to kind of, you know, to put it on the outside, let you guys see it. And so you can kind of see the value and the benefit of what we talk about inside of these trading rooms. So this is going to be from Friday, the uh, September 29th. Hope you guys enjoy it. So check it out. It'll be just a few minutes. And that the Orlando Summit is coming up. This is going to be a simpler trading specific session for the subscribers. Uh, you guys need to sign up for it. Come on, check it out. Uh, most of the team is going to be there. I'm going to be there. This is going to be October 27th and 28th. And today, October 2nd, is going to be the last day to get the early bird pricing. And then from here, we roll right into the money show. And I'm going to be there as well. And I've got a speaking spot on uh, Monday. And then we have a, a board questionnaire panel situation on Tuesday. So it's just going to be a whole weekend full of stock and trading and market kind of stuff. It's going to be real exciting. So hope to see you guys there. and looking forward to it. Starting off today, let's do a bit of a market update. Now, we talked about some of this uh, the other day, but we're finally starting to actually see some stuff. So I thought that this might be a good point to kind of, you know, take everything. We'll look through it a little bit more precisely and say, hey, you know, are which, which side of the pendulum, you know, which way has the pendulum swung so far? Uh, we've seen a lot of damage over the last two months. Uh, the market has been pulling back for a solid two months. And we'll have to see. Sometimes, you know, be a little contrarian to the market or to general themes because, you know, if September is supposed to be the weakest month of the year, well, it lived up to its name. And then here we're supposed to suddenly go bullish into October. I mean, just how everybody's expecting it. Well, that, that might be the case. Of course, there, I'm sure there will be bumps along the road to kind of throw people off the trail and uh, shake out some weak hands. But, you know, I'm seeing some things out there that we've discussed. And from the last day I talked to you, which I think was was it uh, you know Wednesday or so, then I want to be able to follow up on a, a couple items here with you. So let's get into this. All right, let me get over to here. And this will be the kind of the stuff that we're talking about. Let me, oops, there's the summit. So yes, reminder, October 2nd, if you guys have not gotten your early bird tickets, make sure you sign up for that. We're going to be around for that. OK, so we're going to talk about the internals. This will be kind of the list that we go through. And I'll swing this back over in a little bit. And so. If we come over to here, let me show you, namely, on the stockcharts.com, we talked about this before. And at the time, there wasn't anything to say because things were still moving down. It was only on Wednesday did the market actually bounce a little bit. And I'll get into that as well. But you can see here that when the 20 day S, uh, the number of stocks over their 20 day SMA gets down to this extreme level, it does tend to form a bottom. And we are right back out there again. It basically bounced off 10%. So yes, we saw a bounce here, but it did go lower. So just because it's there doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, the start of a new trend. It just means that's likely to reverse. You know, it doesn't get much worse than say yeah, 10 or 5% for the 20-day. Now the 50-day, which is this one down here, we got down to about 15%, and we finally started to see this thing move up. That's another area that tends to get reversals. You know, down when you get to 0, 5, 10, 15% down in that area. I mean, it's kind of an extreme area. And then as far as the 200 day, not too much to say here, but we can say at least that it has maybe taken out the froth. You know, we went from over 70% now to down 43%. So, you know, it's at least cycled up, cycled down and kind of blown off some, some steam there. Another way to look at that, let me just show you this real quick, SPXA50. Are, I like to show you guys this through the Moxie indicator uh, because I think this gives you a really good uh, view. And you could just see that before, even when we were in the, let's get that, even in the, the bear market, you can see when we get down to these levels, they do tend to reverse. So just saying, hey, we are kind of an extreme area. And the other thing is we can kind of look at this and we saw that the whole market basically came here and found a level. And it looked like a double bottom. And remember, I say a double bottom only works when it works. Otherwise, it's a resting place until price moves lower. And that's basically what this was right here. This was a resting place until price moved lower. So now we got that. And I am I would argue that this could actually be the flush out, You know, that, that flush, that drop, that uh, 
that last little thing that really kind of got all the weak hands out. And we could even see that from the Moxie rules, we could see that we got very oversold here. Uh, it's interesting to see that even breadth, this breadth indicator, really works just like a normal stock. The other thing I'm starting to see are divergences. So you know, here's price down, here's the Moxie indicator up, and there we go. You know, we could even see that here on the 15 minute, we started to see some of that divergence as well. Now, when I was talking to you guys on Wednesday, uh, I was with you like Wednesday morning and the market had not turned around quite yet. It did maybe two hours after I was off the mic with you guys and then we've had now a couple of days of up. So this is why from where I left you off on Wednesday morning to where we are now, there's been a change and we can talk about that change. You know, the, the Moxie indicator has now gone green. So we can talk about that. We can see that price has gotten over the 15 minute 50. We can talk about that, those kind of things. All right, and then the other thing I want to show you as we keep walking through that list, and we come over here once again, and we can look at the new highs and new lows. Now, we can't, this isn't the greatest indicator for what I'm about to say, but you can see that historically, when the new lows tend to spike, that does tend to mark a local bottom. And, you know, I don't know if, the, you know, relatively or whatever, how high this has to spike. All I'm saying that, we will know this in hindsight, but if this was the spike that we just saw here as far as new lows, that might be kind of the flush out, right? You know, like an undercut. And then what we need to see are new highs start to gain and go again, okay? But if you just kind of look at history, you can see that in through here, they tend to spike, and then that marks kind of the local bottoms right in through here. So wanted to add that. So let's kind of take a look at our list again. We can look at the put call ratio, then I'll get into the UVXY and the VIX. So let's get that. So if we look at the put call ratio, and we're looking and talking about this up here, we have been up here around one, the 10-day moving average around one, not only once, but twice. And that was a low, and now we're at another low. So I kind of look at this and I just wonder, hmm, you know, how much further can this put call ratio go, especially when it's been pegged up here you know, twice and we've made a lower low. So just, you know, maybe maybe we can't say, oh, this is gonna be like the next rip roaring move to the upside. Hey, we don't know that yet. But if you're short or you're bearish or you're thinking all this downward stuff, maybe be careful, be careful with that. You know, that's telling you that maybe the pendulum is very now uh, swung to the other side, swung to the downside, very extreme to the downside. So you wanna be careful with those, you know, the, the puts and the shorts, that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, look at this. Now let's see what else right there, you know? Just kind of pointing those areas out, okay? And then we can go over to the UVXY. And uh, I even made a post to my subscribers over in the Moxie room uh, how quickly this happened. But do you guys remember? I was with you in the options room and I called this out and I said, you know, seems like any day now because this thing is kind of doing all the things we talked about. Lower third ATR, upper third ATR. We also talked about the 50, 200, 50 maneuver, and basically how far away price was getting from the hourly 50. I also said at the time that, you know, for as much as I was surprised at how much this went up, it's gonna go up until uh, following the 15 minute 50 until it doesn't. And I said, when this thing finally gives up the ghost, it's gonna be when it breaks the 15 minute 50. And that's what happened uh, Wednesday, basically, you know, a couple hours after I got off the mic with you. That was right there. Um, UV, using volatility, using the UVXY, I could look at this and say, you know, we're getting pretty close. You know, this thing's really getting stretched up here. 50, 200, 50 maneuver, all these things. And where's the trigger? Right there, 15 minute 50. So I thought that was kind of fun to follow up on. Uh, we could also just look at the VIX, kind of did the same thing. You know, right up and through here. I mean, almost exactly the same. Let's see, you know, 15 minute 50. And we could also see it, it really kind of reached up here and went outside that third ATR. And then if we kind of take a look at the market itself, also mentioned this, and let's just say, well, I'll just leave it right there. Notice that price came back down to the monthly 10. And remember, I said so far, I'm chalking this up to a pullback. Now, it's been a big pullback. It's been for two months. You know, it's been a lot of destruction underneath there. But if we look here for now, we have to say as long as price stays above the monthly 10, you know, it's just a pullback, even in through here. 
it's when it breaks the 10 and breaks the 10 that it's, that it's going to be a problem. And so far, I just got to chalk this up to a pullback. Now, we'll have to see if later, if this becomes something worse, sure, you know, we got to stay agile. But that's kind of what I'm looking at. And as far as other indications of that, how about we look at the, uh, the semis? You know, what, are they, what have they done? Really just pulled back to the 10. You can see 10, yeah, 10. That went a little below, but over here, 10. You know, so we'll, we'll have to see. And then uh, Apple, what did Apple do? You can see how overbought it was because that gap between price and the monthly 10 and now what? Back to the 10. And you can see here, you know, basically pulled back to the 10, basically pulled back to the 10, 10. You know, it wasn't until it broke the 10 and then it got rejected by the 10, but then it got over the 10. Okay, so generally the trend seems to be up. And if that is not going to be the case, we will find that out later and we'll see things just deteriorate again. But you know, as far as all these breadth indicators and stuff, it kind of shows that we're, we're pretty low as far as, you know, things getting stretched to the downside. Uh, here's another fun one. I mentioned this to you guys as well. Bots. You know, this is the um, Robotics AI Artificial Intelligence ETF. And I just thought this was interesting to point out also basically back to the 10. So now we have to see where it goes. But more interestingly, look at this 50, 200, 50 maneuver right in through here on the weekly chart. It's the same thing I showed you on UVXY on the hourly. Same thing. So yeah, um, something to, to watch. OK. So beyond that, the last thing I have is uh, specific Moxie setups to confirm this long trend. That's what I'm going to be getting into next. So let's get in. Let me show that. And um, I'll take a look at a couple questions first, and then we'll go from there. All right. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed that little session. Now, I did leave it off on those specific Moxie setups because that's what we keep for the specific rooms and for the subscribers in there. Uh, you know, that's where I really dig down into the nitty gritty and really teach the Moxie indicator trading system. And so I wanted to leave that for the subscribers. If you guys are interested in coming in, we do have a $7 trial for 30 days. And uh, if you guys want to pick up the Moxie indicator as well, just come over to simplertrading.com slash Moxie. And we we'll lo would love to see you guys in the trade room. I'm in the chat room and I'm on the mic for most days. So come on over and it'll be great to see new faces. All right, I'll have a great day. We'll see you later.